All right, everybody, this is Ross. How are you guys doing today? Uh, in today's video, we're gonna start the rooting process for my fig trees as we do every winter time. We, we take some of our cuttings off of our trees or whether they're from friends, maybe, maybe I buy them off of FigBid and I start the rooting process, which is essentially getting my fig tree cutting a branch to form roots and to form leaves. And then hopefully by the end of the winter time, in the beginning of the spring, I transition them outside and they're ready to be adjusted now to my climate and continue growing throughout the spring and the summer and the fall and to get themselves established. So that's what we're doing today is we're gonna focus on the beginning, the first part of this rooting process because it really is the most important part, right? We're gonna talk about um, the pots right? The sizes of the pots, the shapes of the pots. We're going to talk about these bins and we're going to talk about the soil, which is, in my opinion, the most important part of the whole process. Um, you know, there's a lot of key pieces to this, like parafilm, I think is really immensely important. Um, you know, having the right cutting to start, the right quality of cutting to start. But for the most part, I think it's all in the soil as really all of this that we grow is, right? I mean, if you get the right base to start, you're just gonna be way more successful, right? Everything begins with the soil. So if you have a, a more difficult soil to deal with, then your rooting process is just not gonna go all that well. And, you know, I remember last year we did a video just like this, and I talked about the soil, and we talked about the different compositions and what I like. I, I definitely prefer compost still, and I like to use my just natural soil conditioner over things like Promix and perlite and, um, and peat moss. I just think it's a more superior um, medium to root in. And we talked about the differences, and, and then I, I also think I talked about something new I was gonna try, a new soil that I was gonna try out and that new soil just really didn't work out. Um, I remember the first batch or two of my cuttings really didn't have all that much success. And it wasn't until I actually was able to find <laughs> my just natural soil conditioner that I was able to um, succeed. So I think it all really starts here because if you can get this, this part of it right, um, it just makes everything so much easier down the road. You know, it's all about the water, guys. The soil is all about the water. It's all about the air. So if you have something that's got a lot of air in it and then has, you know, something that's not gonna get wet very easily or stay wet very easily, then that's what you want because these rooted cuttings, these sticks here, guys, excuse me, they're just so weak. <coughs> and these weak cuttings, guys, you're just gonna have so much trouble keeping them alive because you're gonna fight rot. So. If you're gonna have something like peat moss that's really dense and has very small particles in it, um, it's just gonna hold too much water, in my opinion. Um, at least with the compost and this compost mix I have here, it's got a larger pieces in it in the form of bark. Um, however, in ProMix, you will have larger pieces in the form of perlite. But, you know, I think there's a nice ratio there that is not always achieved as well in something like a pro mix if you just get pro mix straight from the bag it's not going to be in my opinion as porous it's not going to have as much air um, it's not going to be as well draining as something like this product here which is legitimately labeled as a soil conditioner so i think that's what you're trying to find here guys is something that's you know not all that dense it's well draining and has uh, bigger pieces in it so that you can obviously have good airflow and you can avoid rot. Now there is that debate of, well, if I have, let's say, um, compost as an example, well then my compost is going to activate those, because it's biologically active, right? It has all this bacteria in the soil and that bacteria is constantly trying to break down the cuttings and therefore rot them, right? Like if you put a, just a branch, a leaf, whatever it is on the ground, and it's touching the ground in, in contact with the soil bacteria, at some point it's going to start breaking down, especially if you can keep it wet, right? 
it's just a little caveat there. If you put a branch on the, on the top of the ground here, I mean, it's going to probably just dry up. It's not really going to, uh, to actually break down and turn into compost. So those compost bacteria that are trying to break things down in nature um, are going to constantly be fighting the viability of your cutting. So, and people like to argue because of that, um, don't use compost. But I find that any of these peat products are just not... It's just not natural. It's just not something that I think is, it is natural. I mean, it comes from nature, right? But I just think it's not something that is normal that we should be doing. And, you know, our plants have been growing in compost a long time, you know? Um, maybe there is something that will do better in, in peat moss, but even if you, let's say you dry peat moss, it's hydrophobic, right? So it repels water and it's so hard to get it re-wet. And then if you do re-wet it, oftentimes you give it too much water and therefore you then start to rot your cuttings that way. So it's really, um, it's just, let's just say it's easier to maintain the soil moisture. Whatever the medium is for you, that's easier to maintain the soil moisture, that's the medium that you should use. So I'm not gonna harp on that too much, but that's a really key important point here um, is that if you're thinking about what soil to use, think about that little thing in your mind because that's going to give you the most success, right? If you're going to do something like, let's say, I don't know, uh, tennis, you guys play tennis, right? You got to have the right strokes, right? You got to have the right form. If you don't have the right form, you're not going to hit the ball well, right? But also if you're using a different tennis racket every time with different strings, with a different tension, um, you're gonna be totally messed up, you know? It's the same thing here. Whatever the soil that you use, you should be consistently using that soil because then you know, based off of this tennis racket or this tool that you've been using for so long, you get a feel for it. You get the idea of being able to adjust on the fly without really being able to supremely focus in on what you're doing. It then becomes, I guess, a part of your arm, right? Is the tennis racket. So it's the same thing with the soils that you're not gonna have to necessarily think too much about this because it's all the same soil and you've been using it for so long. So here's a key thing I like to do is I just like to fill them up in these bins, put all the pots in the bin, um, fill them up there, and then take these, um, these plastic pots here. And the really nice tip is just to put the pot against the soil horizontally like this and you can just slide the soil in and it takes like two seconds, which is kind of insane. Now, what I like to do is leave a little room at the top here, about maybe uh, a half an inch or so, maybe an, a half an inch to, a, to an inch, because what we're gonna do is fill on top of this, we're gonna put on some rice holes. You guys can use wood chips. Any sort of mulch I think is really key for keeping the soil moisture regulated. So that's another key thing. And I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna just keep filling these guys up. It really does take two seconds. It's kind of nuts. It used to take me forever and I was so upset about it until I just figured out this is a more efficient way of filling these guys up. Um, I wouldn't pack in the soil too much. I wouldn't press too hard. I wanna keep it nice and loose and airy and fluffy. Um, you can add a little bit of uh, organic fertilizer at this point if you want, but I wouldn't suggest that just yet. You can, I would rather use a synthetic fertilizer. Um, in terms of the pot, you have um, a number of different shapes that you can use. And personally, this is the best shape to be shipping. It's the best shape to be uh, growing them in as well. So even if you're not shipping them, this four inch by nine inch, they're nine inches long, is in my opinion far superior to this particular pot. The reason for that is that it's longer and when you transplant this into some other size, you're gonna have a much longer root system. The figs love to go wide rather than deep with their roots. So this will help them train their roots downwards. Also, you can put a much larger cutting in these pots. 
um, because they're longer. So the whole basis of rooting is to get enough nodes below the soil because at each node you can have potentially roots that will form. So you want to bury as many nodes as you can under the soil, but you also want to have about two or three at the very minimum one node above the soil that's wrapped in parafilm because that's where your, your leaves, your branches are going to form. But um, of course it's really key I think and it's, it's always just not stressed enough that you want to have enough of your nodes below the soil. So a pot like this is going to make, make it pretty much so that you have less nodes below the soil because it's just not as long. You know, this is the same amount of soil in each of these pots, right? They're both one gallon size pots, but the different shape makes all the big difference. Let's say I had this. I could fit one, two, three, four, five, six. I could fit six rooted cuttings in this bin. That's a lot of room for six rooted cuttings versus four by six, which is 24. So I have 24 versus six. You see what I'm saying? This gives you a lot more room to do something like this. Now, my buddy Bill, I'll tell you this little secret. My buddy Big Bill actually has a video on it, so it's not necessarily a secret, but Big Bill at Off the Beaten Path Nursery, guys, check out his videos if you want. What he does in these large pots, in these one gallon size pots here that are of this different shape, is that he'll instead of having one tree in here, one cutting, he'll have like maybe two or three cuttings. And then as they get a little bit mature, he takes them out of the pot and separates them and puts them into something else. Now, that's a great idea in terms of saving space and whatnot. But I personally don't recommend it because you don't really want to be taking these things out of the pot. You know, you want to take them out of the pot when everything is completely well rooted. When this entire pot is filled with roots, the top of it has a uh, good lignification on it, which is meaning that it's translating well to the roots because if the top's lignified, the roots are probably quite hardened off and you can then mess with them. And even if you broke some roots as an example, it would still be okay. So that's my you know, big personal recommendation is that you don't wanna be transplanting these things. You know, other than probably the soil, we talked about the parafilm, um, we talked about the actual cutting itself, the quality of the cutting. And then next is really just the method that you're using. Because if you're using the wrong method, it's probably just as detrimental to just using the wrong soil. It's probably the same thing, and I just highly don't recommend it. So you guys can do whatever you want, but those are my recommendations. And, um, you know, they're worth something. So, all right, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, take care. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Get your cuttings going. I don't think there's personally any rush to start right now, but starting now, as I'm doing, um, we'll get you a bigger tree come spring. And that, I think, is always a big bonus. So, all right, guys. Take care.